Welcome to the profile of the Impact Executive. This is a series meant to highlight leaders who are building lasting influence and impact by living their values. Today, we'll be in conversation with Tara Abrams, uh, Managing Director of Arabella Advisors. So Tara, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for the conversation. Likewise. Um, Tara, I've been reading your bio. I've been on your LinkedIn. I've been watching your YouTube videos. And I've got to say, you are the epitome of a champion for gender equality. So curious to learn, like, what led you to doing impact-driven work focused on girls and women's issues? Thank you, Neha. And first of all, thank you for having me. It's it's a really um, exciting opportunity, and, and I love having these conversations. Um, and it's a really good question because it wasn't always that way. I mean, I knew when I left um, undergrad and as I went to graduate school that I very much wanted to have a career in impact and in service. Um, and at the time, however, uh, especially when I was going to business school, I had this sense that I kind of wanted to be behind the scenes, that I thought about myself as an operator type, someone who could kind of get into the guts of an organization and help it more effectively be structured, designed, um, operated in order to achieve its mission and have more impact. But I think looking back on that time now, I think it, I sort of put myself in that space and that box because I didn't have the issue or the passion that really lit me up every single day. You know, when you see change makers out there in the world where they're so fired up about what they're doing, they want to solve a problem, really engage partners. I sort of didn't have that. I knew that I was having impact with my career, but it wasn't something that, that truly came from within. And um, a few years after business school, I was working in a great role, um, leading a, a small foundation at a financial firm here in New York City. And besides being able to have great impact through the work that we were doing, making grants to organizations focused on social services, hunger alleviation, eradicating poverty, I also just I had a chance to meet a lot of those change makers, people who were so passionate about what they were doing that they wanted to come and tell me about it in the hopes that we might be able to collaborate and partner. So I was having one of those meetings and it was with the founder of what would eventually become Girl Rising. She was a journalist, now a mentor and a friend. Um, and she was talking about how there was this kind of hidden secret in the world of international development that all the experts knew about, which is that if you invest in adolescent girls, particularly in their education, all of these incredible things begin to happen. Now, mind you, this was a while ago, right? So this was probably 2009, 2010. So before I think the wave of gender equality that we've sort of visibly seen had taken place. So for me to sort of be introduced to this idea the power of girls' education, especially thinking about myself as a reasonably well-informed and engaged citizen of the world, the fact that I didn't know about this really took hold with me. And that was exactly what Girl Rising was trying to do, which is sort of bring that idea and that solution out into the public sphere so that any, everyone would know about the power of investing in girls. And I will tell you, Neha, from that meeting, I was just hooked. I was hooked. It was the thing. I mean, it really was one of those magical moments. So it's hard now looking back because I can't say that I could have planned it. But for me, it, the lesson is about really opening yourself up to the possibilities. Because for me, when I did that, and I put myself in a situation where I could be connecting with a lot of different kinds of people, ideas, voices, et cetera, it led me to find my own path. And that's really how it started, was through Girl Rising and the idea that we could build a global campaign with partners, corporations, NGOs, um, local uh, communities, and really amplify a message globally, right? Everywhere from the World Bank to small villages in rural parts of Africa and India, they have experienced Girl Rising in some way. And that idea um, just really stayed with me um, since. And that's how I kind of started on my path and continuing on my path towards what I hope is uh, better outcomes for gender equality over the next several years. I love that. It's inspiring. It also, you know, 
everyone hopes to have like that light bulb moment yeah. go off, right? Totally. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm a big proponent of like connecting all the dots, whether they're professionally or personally, but when that does happen, it's kind of just like, oh, I had to go through that, that led me to this. Um, and you know, Tara, I was on your site and I was looking at your pillars and one of your pillars for purpose is corporate innovation. Yep. And um, in the work that we do, this is so important. Um, in your opinion, what role can the private sector play to advance and advocate for women and girls issues? Yeah, it's, it's such a crucial point. And it's why I love the work that I'm doing right now at Arabella, because I get to help companies think about that very question, right? I work across a range of issues, but the, the beauty in some ways, the opportunity that gender equality represents is that it's a lens through which you can look at so many other issues and have impact. Um, so for me, the private sector really has an opportunity to both look internally as well as outwardly as they think about how they can advance the cause of gender equality. But I think the mechanism is the same, whether you're looking inward or outward, and that's investment. You, you have to invest in women in tangible, real ways. And I, I truly am not just talking about raising awareness on a day like International Women's Day. We're still in the thick of Women's History Month. That's wonderful. But I do believe that the corporate investment in gender equality has to become almost like yoga, daily practice, right? And, and sort of having... Um, that orientation be part of discrete and tangible events and activations, but also have it permeate a culture of what the organization is doing internally, because I think that's going to be reflected outwardly in how a company interacts with the world, right? I have um, a dear friend who's the founder of something called Gender Fair, where she is trying to look at companies um, uh, and, and how they measure up across a range of areas of gender equality. Of course, who's on their leadership team and who's on their board, but also what are their parental leave practices? Um, how do they portray women and girls in advertising? What links are they making with the community, um, communities in which they work and do business in order to invest in girls and women um, as part of their doing business? And I think that's such an incredible framing for how the corporate um, sector can really come into this space and be leaders. I mean, there's so much opportunity, a huge gap for us to fill in terms of corporate executive leadership by women, particularly women of color. And it's, it's just like, it's open space, right? It's what an exciting, I mean, certainly I think we can talk about how far we have to go, but I think we can also talk about what the opportunity, it's exactly like Girl Rising and the opportunity and potential that girls represent. If we can only invest just a little bit more. Imagine the possibilities, right? In terms of, um, in terms of really responsible, intelligent, brilliant, visionary leadership happening at companies all over the world. I think we've seen it, right? We've seen what it looks like when women are sort of let, enabled to lead, and that's so powerful. So there's so much opportunity, and I do think this sort of both inward and outward looking frame could be very helpful and instructive for corporations as they're thinking about how and, and, and why they're investing in this particular area. I think it's something that every single company should be doing. I completely agree. I also think we're also in this moment where people are listening. Like, yes, you yes, can always talk about the work that needs to be done, but we can also reflect on the progress that we are making every day. It may not be monumental, but we are doing it and leaders are listening. They actually want to join their peers in this. Um, Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with everything you just said. Yeah, I mean, I think what's what's exciting is that we do have the models, right? We always talk about if you can't see it, you you can't be it, right? So we have those models that we can see. What we can't let up on is, is this idea that, well, those are only a few, right? We need more. Um, they're not um, anomalies, they're not unicorns. They, they are examples of all of the power and potential that um, we could take advantage of if we let women step up, because um, they're ready. Right? They're ready to step up and step in. I think we have to create the culture that supports and enables that to happen. Um, also, I just, I've been thinking about everything you're saying, your, what led you down this path. And, you know, 
as you think about all the work that you've done and the strides that you've made to date, uh, is there anything you wish you could tell your younger self at the start of your career? And the reason why I love asking that is because um, I, I reflect every day on I, things I wish I knew then. Um, sure, so I would sure. love to hear your perspective on this. Yeah, it's such a good question. It's a hard one to answer, right? But I do think I, if I could, I would go back and tell my younger self, it may not look like what you thought it was going to look like, and that's going to be okay. Oh. I think, I think if I can imagine my younger self, and, and you know what, I have my moments today too. I think we can get caught up in what we think something should look like, what we think our life's choices should lead us to then do. And if there's anything that I've learned is that I could never have predicted where I would be now based on who I was or what I was doing, what my plans were when I was coming out of college, thinking about graduate school, getting my first jobs in, in the impact sector, as I like to talk about it. Um, there's no way that I could have predicted this. It felt scary though at the time, right? You sort of felt like you needed to make certain choices so that it would align to some perceived narrative about how your life should progress and how it should go. And the reality is the beauty of life is that it, it's not going to look like what you thought it was going to look like. And there's going to be both positive and negative aspects to that, but it's through coming through those patches where you're a little less certain, you're a little less confident, you're a little less secure that you end up finding, I believe, what, you're, what you were meant to do. I found what I was meant to do. Now, as I said before, and, and I'm saying now, I couldn't have predicted it. It was kind of an accident if you think about it, but I do think that there are lessons to be drawn around not putting yourself into a box and not feeling like at any point you're done. Because I don't think you're ever done. No, I turned 45 on Saturday. Happy birthday. Thank you. And I feel great about it. I feel like I'm doing what I was meant to be doing and I'm not even, I'm just getting started. And so I think that's what I would try to tell my younger self is it's okay. It's gonna be okay. You keep doing what you're doing. Follow your gut when it makes sense to follow your gut. And ultimately, if you work really, really hard, and I do think if you lead with kindness and empathy, I think that's really important to say. Um, I think things will tend to work out, but they may not look exactly like what you imagined when you got started. And that's just okay. That's okay. I should probably write that above my desk. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, Tara, I just want to end this amazing conversation um, on a personal note. I would love to know what inspires you and keeps you going every day because these issues aren't easy. No. They're tough. I mean, from education to even access to clean water and just, have, just access to joining the, the job force, like these are not easy issues. So they're what keeps you no, they're, they're not easy. They're big, intractable problems that it seems like you're never going to solve them. Um, and so I think it's a, it's a good question and one that I grapple with all the time. Um, but I think about, what I think about is my own path, the importance of education for me. And I think about how different it could have been. Right, my, my parents are from India and the Philippines. There's very little that separates me from any of the girls on the screen in the film Girl Rising. There's, there's very little that separates me um, from the girls who um, are benefiting from the work of the Girls Opportunity Alliance at the Obama Foundation, which I had the honor of working with a couple of years ago. Um, there's very little that separates me from the girls who are benefiting from vow to end child marriage. It's really, but for a twist of fate that I ended up here and not where they are. And that's my responsibility to, to 
untwist that, right? It's my responsibility to think about how I can make the world better for those girls. And I also think about my own kids, right? What I want for them is you know, everything you could imagine, right? An education, their ability to pursue their dreams, all of it. But if I want that for my kids, I should want it no less for girls and boys around the world. And so for me, these global issues actually end up being very locally relevant and compelling and urgent because I see my kids and I see how you know, fresh and and, and um, sort of open they are to the world. And that's kind of what I want to bring in my small way to young people, no matter where they are. So that's what I think about every single day. I can't thank you enough for joining us for this conversation. You are an inspiration to me and to all of our viewers who are going to watch this. Um, I commend the work that you do. And I think more people like you need to do it. Um, so thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.